Radio, like always, we're giving away a free set of deflators. All you have to do to win this is be subscribed to the Sarah Keelan Travels YouTube channel, plus comment your favorite part about the new van. Uh, these are the deflators from iCheck. They're the best in Australia by far. And uh, we cannot wait to drop this big, big beast of a van down on this beach, eh? It's gonna be so much fun. All right, guys, we've been keeping plenty of secrets from you. But Too many. <laughs> today, we're finally gonna spill the beans on all of the secrets about our new caravan. We're gonna go through the inside and the outside, and we're gonna show you everything. We've been harping on about how it's the best van and how well built they are. And uh, today, we are gonna be taking it to an epic location. We can't just pull up at any old spot to show you this thing. <laughs> Mum and Dad's driveway. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be dropping this van straight into some off-road action. Strap in, let's go down to the spot, and uh, we cannot wait to show you. It's a cracker day, and uh, this place is off its head. All right, the secret's out. We're going down on the beach with our brand new caravan and let me tell you, I've never seen a van on this beach before and uh, it's looking a little bit soft, so this should be pretty bloody interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more excited than a dog with two tails at the moment. Naked eye. It looks the, exactly the same. Looks the same, <laughs> but it's not. This is a fully Australian built caravan made in Victoria and it is the urban caravan. We bought an 189, so it's the exact same length as our last one. Rightio, let's talk about construction, weights, all that sort of stuff. So two weeks ago we dropped a build video showing you exactly what goes into building one of these things. To recap, it is a fully TIG welded, so it's not pop riveted, and it's fully TIG welded aluminium frame using tube. Now this is the superior way, and if you did watch that video, you watched us test it with weights to see which one carried the most weight. So this frame can hold over 400 kilos, we proved that. Um, it's amazing structure, and we're running a honeycomb floor, so no wood in the floor at all. Safe to say, this van is built stronger than a bloody garlic milkshake. That's why we choose them year in, year out. Now, the weights of this van, everyone's gonna be wondering that. Uh, the weights of this van is around 2850 if you're getting a stock extreme, right? Obviously you start adding accessories and stuff and that obviously adds weight. So we're gonna go through all that today. First thing we're gonna talk about is the chassis. Now this is a Duragal chassis, so it's Australian steel, galled from the inside and the outside. That's the first layer of protection. Then they hit it with an etch primer. And if you've been following the channel for a while, we tested out a powder coating system on these vans and it did chip. So uh, we found it has chipped a little bit on the front drawer by here. Now you're probably thinking that's nothing, like your caravan or you've seen caravans way worse chip than that. If you're a customer and you're paying $2,000 for this upgrade, you want to know it works. And, but for us, when we're testing a product, even though something is 99% right like this, it's still not 100%. So that is a fail. Four chips is no good. Now this is version two and We've tested this a little bit already and we can safely say it does not chip. You can hit this with a sledgehammer and we'll drop a clip in right now. The coating that we put on it is called an extreme coating and it's a polyurea compound. Uh, it's very, very thick. It's almost a mil and a half thick, this stuff. And they spray it on and it is the duck's nuts, right? They glue bricks together and smash them with sledgehammers and cannot break this stuff. Now, obviously when you spray that stuff on the van, it's gonna add weight, it adds around 50 kilos to your van. But in comparison to hot dip galvanizing your chassis, I think there's about, it's at least half the weight, if not less, than hot dip galling, so, uh, galvanizing. So there you go, it's a, it's a Duragal with an etch primer to help that adhesion and then hit it with the extreme coating, so it's bulletproof. Obviously the elephant in the room is this big stone stumper. We tried Rock Tamers, this is what we go to now. It protects the front of your van, awesome stuff. Now we've got the DO35 hitch. Uh, it's a coupling that spins 360 degrees in every which way, meaning if you ever flip your van, your car's not gonna roll with your van. Plus, when you're off-road, you get that really good articulation. Now, I've got a BM Pro trail safe breakaway system, as if the pin pulls out of the breakaway system, the brakes lock up on the van, your van's not gonna, hopefully not gonna go into the bushes. I cannot, cannot guarantee that. I've, I've seen how a lot of you guys drive out there. It's pretty wild, but... Um... What? 
Anyway, we've got massive Anderson plugs up the front here. We're running, things really important with the urban caravans is they run heavy duty cables for their DC to DC chargers. Now, that is to avoid bolt drop. This is some of the r and d stuff that we've done in the past, some of the features that we've done, a bigger gauge cable to carry that current a lot more efficiently. We've got chains, all the standard stuff. We've got a handbrake, jockey wheel. We've got the Pro Trek jerry can uh, box. And this thing is a game changer. It's a full aluminum sealed box. And that means you can put anything inside here. It's not gonna get wet. Now, what I put inside here is all my unhitching gear. So that's chocks, um, everything from my Pro Trek uh, trailer lock, everything goes in here. So when I'm unhooking, it's all at the front here. I don't have to walk around and pretend like I'm a headless chook getting around here. So if you did want a discount with this, Pro Trek SKT15, get 15% off that site. And as we go around the walk around, I'm gonna show you some of the products we've been running for years. Um, really good companies, really good products. And if we can provide a discount code where you guys can save some money, we're gonna do that. So anyway, SKT15 at Pro Trek to get one of these bad boys. It's fully lockable. And I actually keep my drill for my stabilizer legs in there too. So. Really good bit of kit, so. Now we're definitely gonna have to make sure it's locked up. <laughs> yeah, people are gonna know what my drill is. Anyway, <laughs> this is our Extreme box. This comes standard on the Extreme models. You can upgrade your X-Trains and stuff with this box on the front. Now, it's a really good box for a few reasons. It's three compartments. The first compartment on the very other side, which I'll show you in a minute, that's where our Weber sits. Now, in the middle, we've got two nine kilo gas bottles. Normally, I wouldn't be standing on the drawbar because it, I haven't unhooked. Um, I don't really want to unhook today on the beach. I'll show you guys that. Two nine kilo gas bottles in there, plus plenty of storage. Weber on this side, and then this side here is actually, a few people are gonna like this, is where I keep our Starlink. Now, the reason I keep it in there is because nothing can fall on it, nothing can damage it. And when I'm setting up the van, normally the Starlink goes on the front box. So like I said, we put things in practical places so you're not running around your van, it, it decreases your setup time. Anyway, we've got our diesel heater fill up here. Um, pretty standard stuff. A little hack you can do with your caravan builder too, is if you know what tow vehicle side you fill up on, the, um, the fill up for the diesel heater on the same side. So when you're at the Bowser, you can just go from there back to here. I've seen people get it the wrong way around and it's a nightmare. You have to pull the car out and put it back in and stuff. So if you can get your fill up on the same side, mint. Move it to the side of the van. Now we've got these touch lights. These are pretty cool. You press it once, you get white light. You press it twice, you get an orange light and it's just touch. There's no actual button there. It's all just touch sensitive. Really cool bit of kit. Now we've got our tunnel boot. Now that we're hiding some cool stuff in here as well. So all of the tunnel boots come with a triple seal. When you open them up, they've got a triple seal. So even if you don't latch them, they're already sealed. In here though is where our dust suppression system is kept. Only the switch. The fan itself is in a different location, but the good thing about putting it here is you hit a dusty road, you step out of the driver's door, you walk down the van and you simply hit the switch there. And all of a sudden you're sucking in air through a filter so through an inline fan through a filter and then it's pressurizing the van so you get absolutely no dust and we've tested this for years it's such a good product it's actually urban's own dust suppression system and uh if we can recommend one it definitely has to have an inbuilt fan don't rely on um, velocity of driving because sometimes you've got such low speeds dust creeps in anyway so there you go that's another little handy tip good to mention too we actually have been living out of this van so it's still got all of our stuff in it but the only thing we're missing here is a couple chairs and our fishing rods and stuff, which normally go in there as well. Probably wondering what this big box is right here. We'll get into this in a minute about why we put the batteries outside and uh, the new rules and regulations and some of the options Urban offer for that. But there's a reason we put them out here. So we're gonna talk about that once we get inside because it is bloody hot today. In this system here, we have three 240X Pros from iTech World. So we've got a total of 720 amp hours, which is a monster system. I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to 12 volt stuff, if you didn't already know. So cannot wait to show you why we've done this. We've got our heater. So we've got a, a, a double burner here. We've got an electric burner and a gas burner. That's for our hot water. Now moving on to the side, we've elected to go split the windows again because it does increase your privacy. And uh, a lot of people have been loving this idea, but pretty well you can have this one fully blind up. This one's still open and because the van's tall, you can't see in the top there. So you could be fully naked, doing whatever you want. Um, and yeah, that sounded really dirty, didn't it? Um, we've got a TV hookup here. So some caravan parks have the TV hookup. We've got three water tanks. So we've got two 110s and a slightly smaller tank. So we've got around that 300 litres of water, which is a good number. Um, also, we've got a Starlink external hookup. So, Urban have pre-wired this in through their wall. And what that is, is means you can just plug your Starlink into the wall. You don't have to run it through windows and increase your cable because them cables are very sensitive. I've broken a few of them. So, they've put an external hookup here, which is really good. Loving that. 
One thing we didn't speak about in the build was them obnoxiously ugly rims. So we had a set of sun rays on the front and a set of alloys on the back. <laughs> now, the reason that was is because our rims didn't rock up in time. These are what we're going for. So these are our favorite, well, one of the favorite things about the van. Absolutely love the look of this. It matches the car as well, We've got the same rims on the car. But um, these are ROH Assault in the graphite center color. The reason we run these rims is because they're strong. So you can't just put any rims on caravans. They've got to be rated to the weight. Now these rims each are rated to 1500 kilos. So if you've got four of them, do some quick math. That's six tons. So anyway, we've got plenty of weight left in that cow. So the van weighs nowhere near six tons, but that's what the rims are rated to. So we know they're gonna do the job and we've proven that over the years. So anyway, wrapped on these rims are a set of 33 inch Mickey Thompson Baja mud terrain tires. Run these tires for a couple years now and they are absolutely, they are really good tires. The way we protect all of our tires, we run an iCheck TPMS system now. This system we've been running for years. We were iCheck's first ever um, people to test out his system. And today we've got a sick off us. Sam from iCheck is absolutely mental for a limited time. Now it's only while stocks last and very limited stock. So he's brought out these limited edition multi-tools. They're fully stainless steel and you'll get one of these for free, valued at hundred bucks, plus 10% off, plus free shipping. If you use the code SKT to buy any TPMS on the website. So 300 of these made and they're printed with their own little special number. I've got here number 274 out of 300 and uh, these are not going to be continued so get yourself a limited edition iCheck multi-tool. Flash van with flash rubber and you want to protect your family, uh, protect your equipment, definitely get a tight pressure monitoring system. Back on the van we've got standard things like an outdoor shower, this is all standard on Urbans. We've got our power hookup with the um, breakers in the side there so they're isolators right there which is really good too. Obviously you plug your 15 amp lead into there. We've got Light Force lights around the whole entire van. So we've been lucky enough to partner up with Light Force as well. They're making some really high quality lights. And if you did want a discount code on Light Force as well, use the code SKT, that'll get you a discount. And um, yeah, they're really high quality lights. And that's for your full drive, no matter what lights you're buying, SKT. Now we've got a vent up the top. That is only to service the dust suppression system. So the inline fan is mounted behind that. And then this is the vent here that it sucks it in. So to access that, clean the filter, all you have to do is undo two screws and it's all in there. We've got the grey water, which is super boring. That's where your grey water tank is. Super, super simple stuff. We've got a window for a shower. One thing I love about this van is how sexy it is. So they've, they've added in contours. It's not just a straight back van. As you can see up the top there, they've cut it in. So giving it character, giving it a bit of sexiness, which I like. You can all agree, it's a pretty sexy van. We're pretty in love with it. The sand's getting hot. <laughs> I'm gonna start having to go like this soon. Swinging around the back here, we've got a single spare. So I don't know if you guys remember last time we built a van, we put two spares on the back. Adds a lot of weight and we thought it, sort of thought, let's save some weight with this one and uh, only have the single spare, which we've done. Um, we've got a rear bar here and this has actually got the extreme coating on it as well. I reckon it looks pretty stealthy. Dirty gear bag, which we keep all our hoses, our um, electrical cords. And like I said at the front, we keep all our gear we need at certain parts of the van, all local, so we're not running around the van like headless chooks. So um, we've got the Safety Dave reverse camera from Standards. So that's a standard inclusion on all urbans. Plus we've got another Light Force lights. And with the Extreme model, they do put the, the tail lights with indicators, brake lights, the shoot and match up the top as well to give that bit more safety. One thing that I like to show from this angle of the van, is um, all the bash plates and stuff. Challenge everyone out there to find me a more protected van underneath. Now, Urban do a double bash plating system. So all their, all their water tanks have got their own bash plate. Plus, because it's a truss chassis, everything is above the bottom of the chassis line, meaning they can just plate the bottom of the van flat. And the only thing hanging out is the independent arms. Now, I'll show you that in a minute. We're at the good part, the suspension. Can't wait to show you this. So let's jump under the van. The time has come to show you the secret and get sand in my butthole. Pretty keen to show you this because this is a world first. This is an industry first, a world first, a first of all sorts because I guarantee you've never seen this on the van because we are the first ones to have it on our van. So anyway, it's done a lot of testing already. I'll get into that in a minute. So this new suspension is called Terra Glide Suspension. Now it's been developed in Australia for Australian conditions. And we have tested it for three and a half thousand kilometers on the road across the Nullarbor. Obviously there's not many corners on the Nullarbor. 
So we need to test it a little bit more and today's the first time we've taken it off-road. So we're not gonna back it yet because we never back anything on this channel that we haven't tested before. I know a lot of channels out there do back stuff they've never tested, but we are not one of them. We test everything and integrity is our number one thing. So anyway, if the claims are true, this thing is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be the new industry leader and previous industry leader is Cruise Master ATX. Now we had a flawless run with ATX. So I wanna make that very, very clear. And we have nothing to do with Terraglide. Um, we're just testing this stuff out. Yeah, I wanted to make it very clear, we love Cruise Master ATX and we have proven it, but if the claims are true of this new suspension, this will be better. All the components are made for this suspension, so the shock isn't like you've gone to Super Cheap Auto or Repco and said, give me a shock for this amount of weight. This has been engineered for this system, this weight, this design. So anyway, I'll flip the camera around and look at this bad boy. How sick does that look? Now, a few things we've got to touch on here. The first one, the elephant in the room is this torsion anti-roll bar. Now, in the automotive industry, this is called a sway bar, and this sway bar on this caravan, well, this torsion bar is actually linking the two independent arms on each side, and the front is separate from the rear. Now, we've also got massive vessel bags. Now, these are probably twice as big as the sleeves on the ATX. We've also got these massive big bore tube shocks, and these shocks, like I said, are actually they're, they're designed by Munro. and uh, they're actually made for this suspension kit. Bigger bags, bigger vessel bags, and the sway bar. Another thing to note is that independent trailing arms for a very long time have been so square box sections. Now, if anyone's into racing, everyone knows all racing suspension is all tubular because it is stronger. There's people walking past. They're looking straight up my butt. <laughs> What I'm saying is this is tubular because it is stronger and the racing industry uses mostly tubular suspension parts. So another thing to note is that the middle, see there's not much gap in the middle because these independent arms are so big, they almost join up in the middle of the caravan. So this is 2.4 meters wide, this caravan, and there's probably only a 250 mil gap in between them. So you probably won't be able to gauge how big this suspension is, but yeah, like it is freaking massive. It's heavy duty and it is caravan race suspension. It's badass as it gets. I'm gonna be testing this out. It's called Terraglide. Obviously with the anti-roll bar, it handles a lot better on road. You can bank this caravan into corners, which we've tested before, and it handles a lot better. It handles like a race car version of a caravan. And also we need to test it off-road. Today's the first time we've taken on the beach. So we need to test it out a little bit more, but yeah, so far so good. And the, the travel that it has on this, this suspension system, the travel is ridiculous. It's got like twice as much flex as the ATX, twice as much up and down travel. And uh, that's gonna result in hopefully a better ride but also a lot more capable off-road. And uh, you can also lower the caravan a lot more to get into the caravan, which I know a lot of people want because these caravans are high. So to be able to drop it down like a, a um, transport bus and you get in, um, is a game changer. But anyway, another thing to point out here, see the blue, well, we've got an air tank up there as well to feed the bags. Plus we've got that blue water tank, but as you can see, it's all mounted up within the chassis rail. So this is a truss chassis. And like you can see, the only thing hanging below the chassis line, below the bash plates, is actually this independent arm. So back over my head as well, all bash plated up. There's nothing hanging down, no low hanging fruit. So literally this van is bulletproof. Nothing can harm it. And there's no putting pool noodles on pipe. And we cannot wait to test this and get back to you guys in six months time or even a year's time. So far, so good. Look at this thing, it's absolutely sick. One thing I totally forgot to mention guys is a massive part of the TerraGlide system and why it's gonna be revolutionary. So for years and years, bearings on any trailer, whether it's caravan, boat trailer, whatever, you have to service them. You either have to pack them with grease or if they're absolutely flogged, you gotta replace them. Now, with the new TerraGlide system, they are uh, putting in their stub axles a non-serviceable bearing. So they're an SKF bearing, very similar to ones that come in cars. And uh, it's just gonna be change the game because every 10,000 Ks, you do not have to take these bearings out and service them. They are good for more than 400,000 Ks, which was tested on a supercomputer. And uh, that's 400,000 kilometers of like corrugations. They've simulated so many different tests on these bearings. Personally, um, I hate, I so much hate doing bearings on trailers. So for them to be non-serviceable now is a massive thing for us. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention as well is um, the testing they've done on this suspension. So I'll put in some clips now of the testing they did at Terraglide. And uh, this is some stuff that not many people get to see. So one of the observations I made straight away when looking at this Terraglide testing is how stable and flat the top of the chassis 
line actually stays and it doesn't matter what sort of uh, terrain or corrugations the actual wheels are rolling over it seems to be all soaked up in that TerraGlide suspension and I want you to keep a keen eye on the top of the chassis so the top rail of the chassis and see how flat it stays no matter if it's on these corrugations or on these flex ramps. Honestly seems like no matter what it's on it's saying dead flat and means your caravan what which is above that chassis line is going to be totally unaffected and uh, that extra flex obviously that travel in the suspension is obviously helping on these flex ramps right here but I think it definitely comes down to that anti roll bar that torsion bar um, connection there that we haven't seen before and uh, looks super super soft on your caravan and I cannot wait to get this off-road looking at this footage right here but keep a keen eye on the top chassis rail it's absolutely amazing there's some of the testing they've done there's just a few clips um, one other thing that I really wanted to mention is when me and Sarah were selecting a caravan, one thing that was super important to us is warranty because who wants to buy a brand new caravan if your warranty doesn't mean shit? So one thing that Urban does offer that we're really impressed about is Australia-wide warranty. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can take it to anyone, whether they're working out of their garage, um, whether it's a big repairer, whoever it is in any state, there's going to be someone there that can fix your caravan they're not going to make you drive across the country like some manufacturers do to get fixes and trust us that's been forced on us before with our first caravan so for us we got burned once as long as they've got accreditation in repairing caravans they will pay for the repairs and it's all said and done another thing is they're offering now a 10-year structural warranty on these vans which 10 years it's insane i haven't heard of anything like that in the industry 10 years is a, such a long warranty so that is absolutely insane that they're offering that and um, that's them backing their product obviously and when companies do give you a very very generous warranty like that it means it's high quality and they do not expect to see that caravan ever ever again it shouldn't break so 10 year structural warranty which is an absolute wicked thing as well one of my favorite hatches because inside here we've got the TerraGuide control unit this is where you variate all your little your knobs and stuff to make the air go up and down all the, the fancy stuff now we never had airbags on our first van and we always tell people you don't need airbags. You definitely don't to get out there and enjoy this stuff. Um, to get down this beach today, we didn't need airbags, but since we've had airbags, we, we love them and it's hard to go back to no airbags now because it's so, so convenient. This is how you control it all. So um, what I'll do is I'll show you guys the travel in this new suspension because it has twice as much as the old ATX. There you go guys, that's full extension, well close to full extension. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of travel in this suspension and we've actually tested it side by side next to ATX and it has twice as much travel up and down as ATX. Now, another cool thing Urban have done is it's a flat floor van, but there's actually a little cavity underneath the wheel arch here. And what that allows is these wheels to actually tuck up within the van so you get even more travel than normal and uh, it's really cool. So a car, normally when you're articulating through ruts, it does allow the car to tuck wheels, drop the wheel, tuck the wheel, drop the wheel. So the caravan is gonna be mimicking the car. Now, this is sick. I'll, I'll pump it down now quickly to show you how much travel this is. And not only is this good for leveling the van, but I always get Keelan to drop this side of the van when we get into camp, because then I can reach the step. It does come with a little remote. So standing at the back of the van, you don't think it's quite level. You don't have to be here. You can tweak it up with this and eyeball it to make sure it's level. In this section here, we've also got a external air point. So the onboard compressor is hooked up to this and it comes with an air hose with every van. So all you have to do is plug this in here. Then you can pump up each tire um, and away you go. So that's pretty cool too. It comes with USB charging system in here. Also 240 volt outlets, GPOs, TV hookup, TV bracket with a little level gauge too. So if you are leveling it from here, you can see if it's level. So very well thought out. And if people are out there thinking, what do you do Keelan if the bags, uh, the electrics in the bags fail? Well, you've still got manual inflation here. So if this all fails, you can still pump up and air down your bags from the, uh, the mechanical point. So anyway, thought I'd just throw that in as well. Come to the business side of the van. This is where all the activities take place. We've got another hatch on the back here. So this one, 
Um, same thing again, it's all triple seal action. The thing that I'm going to try out is actually put fishing rod holders in here this time and um, mount our fishing rods in here because they're long and skinny and with caravans you always have a problem with where you put your washing basket, where the bin goes and where to put long skinny things. We've got our awning which I'll show you how to pull out now. So you just flick this little latch here, undo your latch and then simply pull it out like this. And uh, yeah, that's the awning out. Obviously you slide these up, I'm not going to show you fully how to do it, but it's super quick and easy, You're absolutely bulletproof. You obviously level it out, taught it out even more, but yeah, really good awning, really happy with this awning. It's called Global Global Awning, and the, the model code on this is an SAA116B for people that are wondering. I know we got a lot of questions about the awning last walk around. Anyway, we'll put this away. Yeah, very basic, as long as you get a good one. We've got a, everyone asked what this circle thing is here. This is actually a plumbing access point for the behind the shower. So if you ever have an issue with your van, you don't have to pull the whole skin off the van. That's that. We've got a door retainer clip here. We've got proximity lights around the whole van, stabilizer legs. A little feature on the new extremes, um, they've moved the jacking point slightly forward so these stabilizer legs can flip up this way. Previously, that wasn't an option. We've got, obviously got a step, um, pretty generous step as well. And uh, real sturdy so a lot of steps on caravans are not built for for big blokes like me but this step is a hundred percent good you see so we're getting a bit excited here jumping around a bit so we've got a picnic table we've got a 10 amp outlet here so this is perfect for your air fryer when you don't want to heat up your van plug it in here picnic table down bang air fryer on the outside we've got more light force lights around this side they're all separately switched plus we have speakers so these things are sick they're absolute bush stuff machines and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good entertainment system, which we'll get into inside. In the chassis itself, we've got urban caravans etched in, right? So that's beautiful, it saves weight, but it also adds a bit of a little wanky effect, which I quite like, actually. We've, uh, we've got a gas bayonet here, and uh, this side, we've actually got something special going on in here. If you've been following the channel, you know how much we rate these things. These things literally change the game on tunnel boots, because normally you stack things in your tunnel boot, and to get the thing out the bottom, you pull it out, and it all collapses in on each other. We've been running this Protrek slide for bloody yonks. Now, fully aluminium, I think it only weighs around 10 kilos or something like that. But uh, this is from Protrek, so if you did want to get your hands on one of these, SKT15 will save you 15%. And they retrofit into, like, this is the most generic size tunnel boot on vans. So this is the size, um, I believe they've got another size as, size as well, but how simple is that? I'm pulling out literally 40, gears, 40 kilograms worth of stuff keep my tools, snorkels, tables, all sorts of stuff in here. So yeah, really good gear. Um, triple seal on that one as well. We've got more lights around this side. Um, yeah, one thing to mention, this is the extreme model of Urban. So this is their flagship model. This is the rigid edge flashest one you can get. Um, and given that you've got higher checker plate now, if you go on bush, I can highly recommend checker plate. Cladding looks amazing. I love how sexy the cladding looks, but it does scratch. And once you scratch your cladding, um, it's all over essentially. You can't buff it out a lot of the time. So checker plate scratches, but you can't see it. And it's a lot tougher than cladding. So with the extreme models, it's a lot higher up because a lot of the scrubby bush around here, or around Australia, won't scratch the side of the van as long as it's under that height. So that's one thing we do with the checker plate. We raise it. We've got the barbecue pull-out slide here. This is pretty generic these days to have a barbecue slide on your van, but Urban make it work really well into their front um, box, so you don't have to put your barbecue in your tunnel boot itself. That's away. All of the latches on the front tunnel box, I should mention, are dust proof. No dust is getting in that bad boy. Up the front here, we've got another light force light, and let's talk about the 12 volt system in a minute, because this stuff, what we've done with this van, it is mint. Like, you won't believe the numbers we're getting out of this 12 volt system. Practicality, simplicity, but still getting ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. So, cannot wait to show you that. Let's step inside the van. Sarah's gonna show you inside a flash, flash van. And it's probably too flash for us, so let's get in. What's your name? Keelan. Keelan. You look real familiar, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Nah, we just tested the van today. Like, we haven't taken it from the beach yet, so we thought yeah, we'd yeah. just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Down the beach. Yeah. yeah. And you just started just 
like three years ago we just saw bugger it was just sick of our night and five. Good luck getting on the beat. <laughs> you might see right. fluid yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. we'll uh, get a call. Cool. Some idiots. Some, yeah. <laughs> some idiots. Yeah. Some idiots. 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 Some <laughs> Righty, a bit of a story there. That was Tom the Ranger. He was an absolute champion. He come down and uh, made sure we weren't camping. We had a few older crew sort of pull up and um, stand outside their car with their hands on their hips, sort of staring at the van. And uh, I don't think they were that impressed to see it down there. So Tom was pretty impressed to see it on the beach. He said he'd never seen a caravan down there. But Tom was a champion and uh, yeah, had a good chat with him. How sick is this spot, honestly? We are so lucky, but anyway, my time's over. Time to hand most it over to this person. Part. All right, this is our home on wheels, the inside part, and this is the most homely part of our caravan. So, when you step in, you've got yourselves a nice little lava lamp here, some lighting around the uh, side here, so you can't lose your caravan. You can't lose it, all right. <laughs> Okay, so we have opted for very similar colours to our last caravan. We've gone the dark bench tops, dark couch, and then we've gone light and bright cupboards. So we've got the matte white cupboards. We found they were super easy to keep clean last time, so we stayed with the matte white. Um, we love the look and it makes the space look a lot bigger than it is. We're living in an 18 9 foot van, so it is very small. So it's important to have that white and light colours so it sort of makes the space look bigger. We've got our waterfall bench top here, which we absolutely love. It's so beautiful. It makes it look really nice and modern. We've gone for the black pack, which basically means that all of your sinkware, your taps and your handles are all black, as well as in your bathroom. Looks nice and modern. We love that. All of these are lockable. So when you're traveling, you need to make sure that you close them back in and then to unlock, you just open it and they're unlocked. All of the drawers are soft closed, so if you slam it shut, it actually doesn't slam, it's all nice and soft. We've got our coffee machine here, which is essential for saving money on coffees. Coffee's like $10 a coffee at the moment. Definitely need this, it's not a want, it's a need, and it's easy to run because we do have quite a large electrical system in this, which Keelan will go through soon. All right, behind the coffee machine, we have got one of our favorite parts of the kitchen. It is our large kitchen window, so you can opt to have the standard window, or you can upgrade and get the big kitchen window, and this is why we get it, for views like this. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, it's so pretty. Like Keelan said, we've gone the splitter windows and that is literally basically for privacy. We keep this one open when we sleep and we don't have to worry about anyone getting inside the van and then we'll shut that one and lock it so it's nice and safe. So the next thing that we've opted for is the L-shaped couch. The reason we went for this one is because it opens up the area and you can get easily from the bed and in here and it's not blocking anything. The couch's upholstery is made at New Age Upholstery, which is Urban's sister company. So not only is the chassis being made in-house, all of the stuff inside the caravan, like the upholstery, is also being made in-house as well. So it's one big family urban, which we absolutely love. Here we've got a nice swivel table you can move it out and in and then it also goes up and down too. When you first get your urban, you will get a little insert. You can drop this table right down so that makes a third bed, but obviously we don't have children or anything. Again, we've got a massive large window here and these are easy to clean because they're all flat, whereas some of the vans get the little crinkle, crinkle ones and it's hard to clean them. Here we've got touch lights on either side. We've got USB-C, USB, and then two power points on both sides. Over on this side, we've got a huge map pocket, which we keep all of our laptops and work stuff in. Down the bottom of the van here, you can see it's got beautiful LED strip lighting. And the light switches to these are actually in the bedside table. So if you wake up during the night, you can flick yours on on either side and it just lights up the bottom so you know where you're going to get to the toilet. Speaking of the toilet, we have gone another composting toilet. This time we've gone for the Ogo toilet. Before we had the Nature's Head toilet and the Nature's Head was excellent. The only thing that made us change is that this is electric. So you simply press a button and then that'll mix the composting compartment. And it also has a light on the side that tells you when your wee compartment is full, whereas the nature's head didn't. So there was a few times where it may have had one or two wees too many in it and then it did overflow. So yeah, that was a little bit of an issue. You actually don't have to open up the whole toilet to get your wee compartment out. You simply get these little latches on the side, open that a touch, 
and then you pull that out like that. So before the nature's head was this big clear bottle and you could actually see your urine from the outside. Whereas this is all tucked away nicely. Um, it's a really nice design. It's a bit smaller than nature's head. However, it does have a lot more moving parts. So it's electric, it's got different compartments. So we're not sure how it's gonna go yet with corrugations and stuff. The nature's head was just one big unit and it was durable, so it did really well. But we'll see how this one goes. This side, we've got the same lots of drawers. However, we have extended them a little bit. So we've made more space. These little dividers are just from Kmart, <laughs> real cheap option. <laughs> Um, and then down the bottom, this one is a hatch for all the shoes. On this side, we've gone with a large cupboard with some shelving. And then we've got overhead cupboards here, which are all empty. We don't have anything in there. On this side, we've got our linen cupboard. So we've got two um, shelves there. We've got our linen basket. We've then got a little flap here and that's our washing machine which is also accessible from this flap here as well and normally that's here so we've redesigned it so it's all hidden and by hiding it in there you're actually picking up all these spots here for drawers and that becomes like pretty much your bathroom at home with all your toiletries and yep. stuff we've also got another little secret shelf down here um we haven't found anything that we want to put in there yet Bob roll. yeah toilet paper or something Okay, so we've got same colour bench tops, obviously, with a nice big mirror here and a mirror door. And then we've got the beautiful bowl sink top here. I really love the design of that one. Uh, you got all your light switches, two 240 volt ones, and then a little touch light there. Uh, up the top, we've got our hatches, which air out and air in for the toilet. Another hatch there. And, and then this lights up as well. Oh yeah, that's another light. Um, okay, next, you're our shower. Of, you're already out of breath. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> this is the most talking I've done since I was teaching. All right, in here we have got a large, space, spacious shower. It's huge. Huge for me, big for Keelan. Um, got the black tapware there. We've put some fusion locks in here to hold all of our bits and bobs. Got another light, skylight up there. Oh, another yeah. little trick we do is on the inside of there, we hang a little hook so that when we get home from the beach, we can just hang our bathers up there and they're not dripping everywhere in the caravan. So yeah, handy. Next thing is our fridge. And this is another change to the fridge. Before we had the Dometic, we've got the Thetford one. Thetford, not Thetford. Thetford. <laughs> That's all right, it's almost. So we've got the Thetford this time. It is larger, so we've lost a hatch down the bottom. And this one's actually a matte black, which, yeah, it doesn't, what do, you, what do you reckon about the matte black? I don't know, I liked the Dometic more at the start, it looked more like modern, but I'm actually coming around to the matte colour now because it's I like it how many iced dirty. coffees we can fit in this thing. Look how big that is. Yeah. So this is, a, this is, I think, the biggest fridge that a caravan can have in it. But that's been good. The fridge door seems sturdy as well. A lot of people ask about doors and, and fridge doors coming open on tracks. We've never had it happen However, to us. However, we've always had the Dometic, so we don't know how this one's going to go on off-road tracks, but we will see and we'll let you know. It feels sturdy, but like that, that feels like a good system. Yeah. I don't know yet, but... Anyway. Um, up here, we've got the NCE microwave and this one has got no plate in it. Plateless. Bef yeah, before we had the one with the plate and we always just left the plate in. There were no issues, but I was like, this van, I want the one without the plate. All of the cupboards in Urban are CNC cut furniture, so it's basically exactly the same as what you get at home. At the top here, we keep all of our keys, so we've just like labelled them so it's easy to get to. You've got your water, toolbox, tunnel boot and picnic ones. It looks like a lot, but there's not. It yeah. honestly isn't well, ideal at all. Four I'm, sets. I know you can get the one key system, but we haven't got it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we yeah. find that works for us. Alright, so when you're designing your urban caravan, you can either go for the one large cupboards or you can get splitters in them. So for this side, we've gone the splitters and that's where we keep all of our first aid gear. Ooh, boost! <laughs> Get your voost! You need parry it for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, and that's also where we keep our air fryer and then the air fryer silicon things. And our air fryer is a br brabrantia. A brabrantia. Yeah, and it's gone well, hasn't broken yet, so that's over a year we've had that one now. Up here, we have got all of our electricals. So you've got your water pumps, 
AC and then you've got your gas hot water and electric hot water and then we've also got our stereo system thing which we Sick. actually don't really use much. Sick. So this system here you can actually um, turn inside outside speakers on and off so if you want to listen to music inside and you want to like if you're a big burly bloke and you want to listen to some pussycat dolls <laughs> you can inside and no one knows you're listening to pussycat dolls and i don't know why i'm saying that uh, yeah electric hot water here too um two gpos these are for your wi-fi dongles plus you can actually connect your phone up to this via bluetooth or that's the manual plug-in point and that is your 4g full netcon and that's where we keep our um, aircon remote and our TV remote AC shut off and also our bulkhead light switches up here as well. So yeah, that's that's how that all works. We probably missed one of the most important parts of the kitchen and that's where you cook. So we have stayed with the gas system. We like to cook on gas, well I like to cook on gas. We were going to go induction because we do have a large system this time. But I don't know, I just prefer cooking on gas and I'm sure there's a lot of ladies and men that will agree with me. We've got the three gas ones there and then we've got one electric burner. So you've still got the option of electric and then we've got a little grill in here. For our dishes, we don't have like a dish rack or anything. That's just from Kmart and it's a little dish rack that fits perfectly under there. So it's all nice and away. One thing to quickly mention too, the two taps in the shot right now the one on the left, the silver one, is actually a dedicated filtered drinking water tap and the other one is not. Got a range hood here as well, guys, which is oh, yeah. an, another legality in the vans, which has a light on it as well. Sorry, Sarah. That's okay. Say that. um, in the bedroom here, I've got a nice big queen bed. On top of our queen bed this time, we have opted for a Dreamer RV mattress topper. So if you watched our last walk around, we had a big mattress topper that we had tried to cut ourselves. And the annoying thing about it was that every time we slept, it would just like slide back and every day we had to remake the whole bed. So these guys have actually designed a caravan mattress topper that is fitted to a caravan mattress. So it's rounded on the sides and it's got straps and anti-slipping base, which keeps it in place. We've been using this for over two months now and it has not slipped once. So that is sold for us. If you would like to get yourself one of those, we have got a discount code, which will get you $15 off and it's SKT. And that's at Dreamer RV. Dreamer RV. <laughs> Dreamer. On the sides here, we have got a nice big wardrobe. We opt for shelving because we prefer that. You can also get hanging space. You've got your nice big large nook on the side there and both of us have our map pockets. On either side of the bed, you've got a drawer and then you've also got a little cupboard here which has two shelves. Uh, both sides, we've got our touch reading lights again. <laughs> And which are cool all you got to do with these is touch them once you get this reading light it doesn't look like much but that's enough to see what you're doing at night without waking your partner up and then you get the full big bertha which will blind your retinas so that's actually meant to be facing down like that but yeah it's you can see and then you can jiggle them around so you can you know do some cool yeah. stuff and things and up stuff the top like that yeah we've got three overheads which we just put all our jumpers and jammies and stuff in. Up the top here, we've got two Sirocco's on the roof. Now, the reason why we put our fans on the roof is so that we can face them into the bedding area and then also when we're cooking into the kitchen area. So they can move around and then tuck them away. We've gone the white so that they blend in with the roof. We've got a large sky hatch there, which just... God. It's just, <laughs> it's just new, the seal's too good on it. <laughs> just push it up like that. Yeah, I made that look so hard. Anyway, there's a uh, little skylight there. We've got our TV on the side here, which folds in and out. Obviously, you need to take that down when you travel. On the right hand side here, we've got our diesel heater. You've got your controller located right next to the bed, so you can turn it on and off from your bed. And then the hot air for that comes out from under the bed. Because it is such a small van, it usually heats the area up really nice and quick, so you don't actually have to have it on for that long. And the same goes for the aircon. You don't usually have to run the aircon for long because it does cool off the area nice and quick. 
This is Dometic's brand new aircon, which we haven't actually tested out yet, but from what they've said to us, it's more efficient and quieter than ever. Previously, we had the Dometic Ibis 4, which was excellent. We had no issues with that, so I'm sure that this is going to be just as good. A very last thing before we get into our electrical system, up the top here, we've got another map pocket. We have as many as we can in this van for storage. That's where we hang all of our sunglasses. And then we've got our blackout blinds here. That's standard at urban caravans. So over here, we've got our hat hangers. We put our hats right by the door so that it's easy to get them when we go to the beach. We've got our hanger from Tangles Macrame, and that is Keelan's little sister's business. So if you're looking for some macrame... If you're looking for macrame, <laughs> you know where to get it. My little sister. Now look at this. High quality macrame. I don't know anything about macrame. <laughs> But um, yeah, my sister's making some cool shells, some cool hat hangers, some cool... And she's got all different colours too, so you can like style it to your van. Keelan's parents, they've just gotten a nice green one for their van. Yeah, yeah, so you can get the greens like that, sort of sagey green. But yeah, how sick is that? That's um, that's some bloody good macrame there, eh? Get, get your macrame while it's hot, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's get into some, um, some 12 volt gear. Let's get onto the electrical system because a lot of you guys spotted some blue gear instead of some orange gear. Now we're going to tell you why that is. But first, we're going to tell you a little bit about the construction. It's a honeycomb floor, so no wood rot, it's full composite floor. We've got composite fiberglass panelling on the walls. So that's not a wood skin wall. A lot of companies put an aluminium frame and then they put a wood skin wall or a wood skin roof or a wood skin floor. No good. If you go on aluminium, go the whole way, do your research, get honeycomb, get fiberglass, and this is a one piece roof, fully structural. So I can get my 100 kilo big fat ass up here, clean the solar panels, and I'm not going to fall through and wreck Sarah's bloody tea parties. So anyway, one piece roof. This is all one piece. So really, really important. Um, and it's all aluminium TIG welded. So it's very, very strong. So keep that in mind. You're a smart bunch. So do your research. Like Sarah said, CNC cut. The chassis made at extreme chassis. Um, so in-house, the upholstery is made at new age. Everything on this van is in-house pretty much apart from the appliances. So most van companies, because most of your appliances will be the same. So the same windows, the same fridge, the same microwave, but it's the way it's built is what sets it apart. So keep that in mind, guys. Let's talk about the 12 volt system because it's one of my favorite parts. Um, like Sarah touched on, this is the new aircon, right? So it's more efficient than ever. And I'm gonna tell you guys why and how we can run this bad boy plus charge our batteries at the same time. So I'll flip the bed up. This is where most of the exciting stuff is happening. So, as you can see here, we are running a full Victron system. Now, the reason we have gone to a full Victron system, because a lot of people ask this question, why aren't we running iTech World like our last van? Urban don't offer that iTech World system. So they wanted us to run a system that they offer. We've gone with the system that Urban's chosen to put in our van this time, and this is the Series 3 Victron system. Um, so, Series 3 means it's the there's three series, three being the most crazy um, crazy grade system. Um, like I said, we've got the batteries outside to meet the new regulations, which we'll touch on in a minute. But to run you quickly through this system, to start with, we've got two 50 amp MPPT controllers, and that is regulating 1,360 watts of solar. So 1.36 kilowatts of solar on the roof. That's six 220 watt panels, uh, which is amazing. We just say all the time, fit as much solar to your roof as possible because solar is king. And uh, we've got that two to one ratio pretty much with our solar to batteries. I always say two watts of solar to every amp hour of batteries. That's my rule of thumb. I've been saying it for years and it has not let us down. So we've got two 50 amp MPPT, so 100 in total. We've also got two 30 amp uh, DC to DC chargers regulating that alternator charge from the, the tow vehicle. We've also got a separate 15 amp MPPT because we wanted to hook in a portable blanket, which is our 300 watt iTech blanket, which bumps us up to then 1,660 watts of solar, plus we have a second portable input, which we can link the solar panel up on the car roof, which will make it around 2,000 watts of solar. So two kilowatts we can have on this system. And uh, to give you an idea, just the six panels on the roof, we're getting over 90 amps of charge. So 93 amps of charge, which is amazing. That's all um, That's all communicating through the, the servo or the gerbo or the whatever the bow this thing is, which pretty much links all these things and that means they're not counteracting each other um, and it all works very much in unison. Um, we've se separated the DC to DC from the MPPTs because we love talking about that simultaneous different charge rates. So we can be driving getting a full 90 amps from the roof, but we can also be getting our 60 amps from the vehicle. So 150 amps 
of 12 volt charge coming into our system, which is just ridiculous. Uh, one thing we need to mention too is this huge multi plus unit. So this is our combi inverter plus AC charger, which is a 120 amp AC charger, which is awesome. Plus it's 3000 watt inverter, but can do 5000 watts for up to 20 minutes. Now we're running coffee machines, microwaves, Starlink, air fryers, all sometimes at once. Um, I did I say air con, I probably did. So to be able to do that, sometimes you don't have to turn the coffee machine off to run the microwave and vice versa for all your appliances. Radio, the last piece of the puddle, pu the puddle. <laughs> <laughs> <in the puddle. laughs> Alright, last piece of the puzzle puddle is this front end screen. So this is what you see. Um, this is pretty much showing you all your stuff that you need to know about your 12 volt system. Now, I'll try to cover this pretty quickly but in some depth. So pretty well, this is the front screen. And this is my favourite screen because it gives you a good overview of what's actually happening. So you've got your Victron inverter here. It's currently not inverting, so it's off. We've got our AC input, obviously we're not plugged into power. We've got our AC loads, which is none because we don't actually have our AC, char um, AC pass through inverter on. All we've got going on is 12 volt coming out of our batteries and obviously we've got our solar coming in. Now, the batteries are at 97% and that's what they stay at literally most of the time. Even if we're running the air con, it obviously cranks up on the PV side of things, but right now that's purely float. So you actually find that we're only pulling, you know, 80 watts of, of 12 volt power off this and that might be the fridge fan, it could be a light, it could be a little phone charger, who knows, we're pulling bugger all power at the moment. So the solar is only putting that much in. So it, it doesn't um, absorb as quick when you get it up to around 97%. It um, hits float charge and that is just the algorithm doing its thing because it is a lot smarter than me and you. And um, yeah, it's just doing its thing in the background. So that's pretty cool. So that's the front screen, it's not, faff about too much here that's the second screen um, and then we've got this screen which tells us all of our water tank levels and I know you see that gives you a nice percentage so previously we did have the BM Pro Odyssey front screen and one thing I want to point out is there's absolutely nothing wrong with the BM Pro system obviously this is the next step up and it actually gives you a percentage not like it's normally the BM Pro just says one quarter half full this actually gives you a a percentage and even better yet we can have exact liters left so they're all our tanks there so yeah it's a really good system um quite simple but i really like it and uh it's a, you can actually get a lot of information out of it which i love because i'm like i said i'm a bit of a nerd so that's our front end screen on the victron um yeah like i said we probably cover this in a lot more detail down the track, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. Radio, the GoPro just died. So I was saying the new legislations around battery laws is that you can't have your batteries in an inhabitable space inside the van, meaning it has to be ventilated to the outside of the van. So that gives you a few options. Urban do offer a few options. Uh, they do offer an external battery box, which you can put on your chassis, like a normal caravan five, 10 years ago, all had chassis mounted batteries and only a few battery companies actually make batteries that can withstand them conditions, iTech well being one of them. And uh, all, the other option is you can put your batteries underneath the bed. However, the bed has to be box sectioned out and that has to be fully sealed from the outside. So there has to be a partition between the batteries that is fully sealed off from the caravan in habitable space. That means gasketed and any caravan produced after I think mid November of 2023 every caravan produced from that date forward has to adhere to the new rules. And this isn't a res retrospective law. So all the caravans built previously to that don't have to adhere to them rules. That's why we've put the battery box on the outside of the van and we've mounted the iTech Weld 240X um, pros to the outside, which are fully um, IP67, so it can be submerged in water. They also are fully dustproof. Um, they have a, such a high heat rating and uh, the only reason we can mount them outside is because of those three things. So that's what we've opted for. Yeah, before I forget, um, so the solar regulations have changed as well as the battery regulations. The new solar regulations state that you have to be able to isolate your solar coming in from your panel. So in between your panels to your fusing and then from your fusing to the actual charges themselves. So Urban have done that. We can fully isolate the solar, but they also have to be individually fused before they go to the battery. So they've got to be fused, but also individually fused. <laughs> it's in this cupboard here. So this is all of our solar. So you've got six inputs coming in and they're individually fused through this little bank here. So that is fully adhering to the new rules. 
And personally, I really like that because if one solar panel fails, you're not going to destroy your whole string of panels. And plus, it's super easy to service and fault find on this system. If you did, it did ever have an issue, it's all individual. So it's very easy to start plucking a few fuses, flicking a few isolators. I think I really agree with that change in the legislation. I really like that. Here's our new Starlink provision. So Urban have wired it up through the wall. Have a look at this, Sarah. So that's where our modem goes. And then inside here is our Starlink point. So we just plug our modem straight into that. It's got a 240 volt outlet in there and that's where our Starlink lives. So pretty cool stuff Urban's doing. Um, we're really stoked with that. All right, Eo, so, oh wait. Right out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last little bit before we, uh, wait. Before we, before we go for a swim, we thought we'd just elaborate some things. <laughs> Um, and yeah. these are questions that we get every single time we put up a video like this and they've already we've already started getting messages private messages people asking us these personal questions so we thought we'd just tell you and give you the full deal yeah this is not a free van <laughs> we, we paid money for this van they can't no one's going to be in business if they start giving out free vans no. to people like us because at the end of the day um, if we own this van, we can do yeah. what we like with it and we get to sell it at the end of the 12 month period. And we have never, ever, ever in the three years of doing what we've been doing heard of people getting free vans. We've got friends in the industry with other companies and no one is getting free vans. Like, it's just ludicrous. And I don't if know they where are, this rumor is coming from. If they are, good on them if they're yeah. getting a free van. But um, Urban our, should do that. Yeah, Urban, <laughs> Urban should do that here in, here in that, Steve. Um, so we own the van, we have to look after it and that's why we get so distraught when we scratch it because at the end of the 12 month period, we get another build slot and that is purely because we do R&D testing for urban yep. caravans. So in the past, we've tested things like battery systems without, sometimes without you even knowing. We make sure we test everything before we promote it and that's why we stand behind urban because we've been running them for three years now. So yep. last time we, just for an example, um, to, to let you guys know, like we put that powder coat on the chassis we thought it was going to stop chipping, save a heap of weight on hot dip galvanizing. It was just a textured powder coat. Um, six months later, it started chipping. So we found that out. We reported straight back to Urban. We said, Billy, Steve, this thing's chipping. Um, what are we going to do for these vans coming up? And they said, I need to make something better. So Steve and Bill went away um, and the whole and team at Urban. That extreme yeah. Coating. So now yeah. the extreme coatings here and that's the next step up again. That's pretty much what we do with Urban yeah. Caravans. And we're obviously not the first step in R&D testing. Like no. everything that you put on a caravan goes through R&D testing. It's up to legislation. Like yep. you can't just put anything on a caravan. So everything's been tested and then we're that next step giving feedback to Steve so that he knows that he's making the best product for his customers. And so we get to test it practically in a practical sense, yeah. like this TerraGlide suspension. If the claims are true, this suspension is going to be the best thing that ever happened to the caravan industry, but we haven't tested it yet. So we're not going to say it's freaking awesome because we did have a flawless run with Cruise Master and the ATX. Yeah. We love that stuff. We had such a sick time with it. So we need to test this stuff before we back it. And that is how we attack every single thing that we do with our channel with integrity yeah. because we have the utmost respect to you guys. So we that, do get messages, people saying, would you recommend this? I'm a Nana. Would you recommend it to me? And it's like, yes, anything that you see on our channel, we would hundred percent recommend yeah. to our Nan, our pop, our family. They're all watching our channel. Yeah, so I don't know. We would never be no, dishonest or no. untruthful. To and you it's guys. criminal. We actually think it's criminal people promoting stuff they don't believe in they've never yeah. tested it blah 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 and saying that my parents actually own an urban caravan so that speaks volumes for that um we wouldn't promote anything that we wouldn't out want our family to run yeah. and own so the next thing is do we sign a contract with urban caravans are we under contract with them no no <laughs> so we don't sign contracts we don't say we have to they, there's nothing to say we have to say nice things about and even product. if we did have a contract with urban it would have in the contract that we're allowed to say what we please because that is our whole thing yep. about our channel so yep. yeah yeah they actually promote us picking to pieces their products so then they can make it better which is rare as hen's teeth in companies yeah. these days uh yes at the end of the 12 month period this van will probably most probably be up for sale most probably it will be it will be up for sale in 12 months time plus there's new every year the industry is um, improving evolving and, and there's out new products so yeah. we need to be on the a game there we need to be testing out the most recent stuff to say if it's any good and and if we recommend it or not so pretty much that's our full transparency probably overshared it's probably safe to say we've <laughs> told you guys a lot more than a lot of other people tell on their channels and which is fine which is fine yeah <laughs> but we like to be fully transparent with you guys and the trust is there and and we we share what we share 
but there's also stuff like people message us and say, oh, how much money do you make? We're not gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna answer that, but we will tell you guys everything that we can. That we feel comfortable sharing. Yeah. yeah. So we're not under contract with Urban Caravans. We pay money for the vans and we do not get commission if you guys buy a van. Want to buy an Urban Caravans, make sure you put in the SKT token at your dealership or at any of the shows yeah. and you'll get a free lithium upgrade. So it depends on what model you buy is what upgrade you get, but you will get a better deal because if you mention us, um, we've sort of arranged that deal with Urban. At least you guys get a discount on your van. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this walk around. I'm sure we've missed things. 100%. <laughs> and we always say that because there's just so much to go through and yeah, anyway. We couldn't have done it without you guys. We're gonna go for a swim now because it is boiling yeah. hot and uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, maybe we might get bogged. We'll keep, <laughs> if we do get bogged, we'll keep rolling. Yeah, we're still gonna get home. <laughs> the, tide, the tide's come up, so we have to drive through all the hard, uh, the soft sand. So anyway, yeah. we'll see how we go anyway. Thanks guys, thanks for tuning in. And, and uh, thanks for your support. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Yo. Thanks for watching legends, make sure you click and watch this video right here.